75% done. J.B. Diamond's depiction of the ongoing credit crunch. The J.P. Morgan Chase and Company chief executive telling analysts and investors at a fancy smancy UBS conference today that the bad times are almost over. But he also added that he couldn't say the same about closing on that purchase of Bear Stearns, a separate story. But that bigger point, that maybe we are on the way out of this, couldn't come a moment too soon for a crowd that probably thought it had never need to hear the good news. I'm talking the Hamptons crowd. The well-heeled crowd, and right now, apparently the hurting crowd. Reports of foreclosures and pinch mortgages hitting not only real estate in this tiny, high-end, Long Island Ocean locale, but even rentals there. So what's going on? Joining me now is Lori Barbaria. She is a renowned Prudential Douglas Elliman broker who's not buying all of this doom and gloom talk. And John Brady, a broker with Caldwell Banker, who, well, kind of is. Lori, you just don't believe it. Well, I'm not feeling it, nor am I experiencing it. There have been some slower periods that we haven't had prior, but I do see the market moving along quite rapidly. Um, when you say moving along quite rapidly, what does that mean? Well, for instance, you said that you thought the rental market was down. In the past two months, I've done two rentals that totaled over a million dollars. A rental rentals. for the summer? Yeah. Rentals well, are the they summer. unusual? They're high-end rentals. Okay. And the rental market, the regular rental market, is quite active. Okay, so what is she seeing that you're not? Well, Yesenia, I'm a trained short sales expert, so I do see a very large different picture of, of what's going on. Um, I see a lot of people, it's not that they just can't uh, make their payments. That's not really the question there. It's what it is. They're just not making them because financially it doesn't make sense when they do the numbers. Well, they have to make their payments. Well, I mean, I'm not saying for people not to, but that's what I'm finding. They're just simply walking away because financially it just didn't make sense. So very rich people are walking away from their Hamptons homes? Well, this is something that's pretty known. I mean, the, the case with uh, the famous baseball player right. that was just recently brought to an interview, it's the same thing. You know, what happens is when you're upside down on a house, um, you know, it doesn't make financial sense as a, as a market is going down. So they're down. super rich to what average folks do. If they get upside down and they're, they're treading water, they walk away. I, that's what it's... Laura, you're shaking your head. I don't see them walking away. I just was in a situation with a foreclosure. It closed this month. I actually ended up selling it at a foreclosure. What I am at seeing... At how much of a discount? Uh, the listing was 3-1. It sold just under 3 so really not that much of a discount. No, but let's just say in a different market, a more active market, the comps on that house were 4.2. So the person did get a very good deal. And that's the point. There are amazing deals to be had in the Hamptons right now. All right, but when normally the inference is that there are amazing deals to be had in the Hamptons, a very, very wealthy area. For those of you outside the New York area, this is where the super rich go to vacation or have their swanky homes. So if there's a hiccup among the super rich, even a perceived one, uh, that changes the ball game, does it not? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I mean, like you were saying, it's, it's from the low, medium to the very high end. I mean, everyone, there's a lot of, there's some people, like Lori says, might not be so affected with the real estate market because some people are pretty much exempt, but there's a large portion of people that aren't. Um, you know, I mean, I'm, I have exclusive uh, relationships with, uh, with the biggest lenders in the nation. And over the past 30 days, I've had at least uh, six different occasions where I had to go um, and pretty much start off with knocking on their compound, compound doors or walls or whatever you want to call it uh, because the lenders have asked me to go out and make that contact because they're already behind on their mortgages and falling. What do you do? What do you knock on the door and they answer what? Uh, well, basically, that's the first attempt. That's the first, my, my only attempt is actually contact the owner. Oh, so a very rich dude answers the door. You're there. You're, you're politely nice. You seem like a very nice guy saying, hey, you know. The bank, the mortgage company is saying you're running late, could you? Well, I also have the documents to back it up. I well, I know you do, but I mean, do they throw things at you? Do they hit you? Do they sick a dog on you? Um, well, their dogs are poodles, right? So the, well, there is a door-knocking kit, you know, pepper spray, dog treats, and a mag light. Really? <laughs> All right. Has that ever happened to you? <laughs> no, but I think what he's saying is a little um, diffracting in the sense that for instance, in the last two weeks, there were 17 list pendants, and out of all of them, there was only one in the actual Hamptons, and it was for 450000 So you're not seeing any of this. You're loving everything. Well, I'm seeing things, but I think that what he's talking about is not only the rich people. I think most... You ever knocked on a door to say, hey, you're running late? I would never do that. Yeah, I would never even open the door for you. Right. I would never I'm do kidding. that. I'm kidding. Great job, both of you. Uh, boy, that would be a nightmare, right? You open on the... Hey, 
We're going to take a quick break here.